So we're getting a look back at a project that I started this sort of time last year. As you can see, we've got here a 10 inch three jaw scroll chuck or the carcass of one. And here are the parts, the internal bits, the jaws and the gears there, the scroll gears. So, as you can see, this chuck is pretty grimy. I haven't had a chance to actually get a look at it since I stripped it down. So today, because I could quite do with this chuck for a job, I'm going to just give it a good rinse down in the new parts washer and get all the parts cleaned and just reassemble it as it did work up to a certain size. But as you can see on that jaw there, there's a couple of sections of the scroll teeth missing. So I can use the chuck to an extent, but depending on the diameter of the part I'm wanting to chuck up, it sometimes doesn't bite. So I will be, hopefully I could find a replacement for this part, but I find that unlikely. So I'll probably just have to TIG weld or braze some new teeth on and then mill them into shape or file them to shape and then we'll have a usable chuck again. Moving over to the parts washer, this is a new addition to the workshop. I'm using some diluted detergent here and a green scotch bright pad just to help lift some of the grime and clean off the surface rust that's built up on the chuck from just sitting around in the workshop and previous year's use. So just flushing out as much of the grime as I can, getting into all the holes, all the thread ports, clean them out as best as possible and just get this chuck in a much nicer working condition to be able to complete some jobs and not be worrying that there's grime within the whole thing that's going to bind up or give us some run out when I'm operating the machines. Just cleaning the jaws up here again using some scotch bright pad and a little bit of elbow grease just to get all the grime out the little nooks and crannies. So this parts washer that I'm using this has come from SGS tool suppliers and it was just under the 200 pound mark and I'm really pleased with how it's working so far I've had to add this little brush onto the end of the main hose there just to help cleaning parts off and then you can remove the brush and use the flexible nozzle there just to flush parts through nice and quickly so I'm really pleased with how this is working out it's cleaned up all the parts of this chuck really well got all the old grease off got all the rust off and should be just about ready to go back together after we get this scroll cleaned up again lots of old grease and grime that's made its way in there over the years so it's good to get this all just removed and scraped out before the chuck goes back together Some of it was uh, a little more stubborn than the rest, but it's starting to clean up really well now. So now moving on to the backing plate of the chuck here, the enclosing plate, just cleaning off all the surface rust off the inside here and cleaning up all the machined faces getting rid of all the grime making sure when it goes back together everything's going to operate nice and smoothly moving on to assembling the chuck now using a little bit of assembly lube there just to make sure none of the bearing surfaces are going together dry and it's always good to get a bit of lubrication in there before 
the chuck is sealed up for good or until I strip it down <laughs> again in the future as anything like this should always have regular cleaning and servicing to maintain proper usage of the chuck without damaging it over time just getting the back plate installed there and now we can move on to installing the jaws obviously the jaws are numbered so you've got to put them in in the right sequence and catch the scroll Right then guys, so as you can see here, I've now got this chuck put back together and it's been getting used. Um, I'm pleased enough with how I've managed to clean this up for now, although for full travel use of the jaws, I'm going to have to replace those broken teeth on the back of one of the jaws. But for what I needed to do, the jaws have worked. So as you can see, I've got two fixture plates attached onto the table here to allow a larger working area and it's given me a slotted platform to sl to sit the chuck on top of and allow machining of this shaft that is too wide of a diameter to fit in the master's spindle and the Triumph is obviously stripped down at the moment so I've decided to use the mill as the lathe today so as you can see here my plan has worked and I've managed to get this journal turned down from 45 mil to 35 mil and then the other side I'll have to turn from the stock 60 mil to 35 mil and these rollers are going to be the main axle shaft for a lawn aerator that the pal of mine is currently making a pair of so i've got two shafts that are identical jobs needing done but one slightly longer as his is a wider version so i've had to set up this slightly out of the ordinary fixtures set up but i'm pleased with how it's turned out and i've managed to get this job completed
So I'm now finished with turning down both these shafts journals on either end and this job's pretty much complete, ready to go off to the lad who's making the lawn aerators. So I'm really pleased with how this has worked using the fireball tools, fixture plates to extend the mill's working surface and give me a through hole there to work on some longer shafts than the master could deal with at the moment. Really, really happy with this machine. It's the first proper couple of jobs I've had a go doing on this machine and it's performed really really well so i'm looking forward to getting some more jobs done on this machine as well get some horizontal boring done hopefully um it's just turned turned out all right you know it's an absolute workhorse really really pleased with it